If you love Baltimore sports, you'll love WNST.net. Uh, Lawson, you got five minutes and you are on the clock. All right, guys. First of all, I want to give you some predictions uh, so that weeks from now you can come back and tell me how stupid I was or I can tell you how brilliant I was. For the uh, Stanley Cup Finals, sorry, Caps fans, I see a New Jersey Devils San Jose Sharks final. In the NBA Finals, got to go with the chalk. LA Lakers, Cleveland Cavaliers, although. I say watch out for my sleeper, the Orlando Magic. I think that they have a chance, especially to get by Boston with Garnett unhealthy. And then they have played well against the Cavaliers this year. Boxing coming up, we have Ricky Hatton and Manny Pacquiao. And although I see a fairly uncompetitive ending, either late KO or easy decision for Pacquiao, I think the first four rounds of the fight potentially could be legendary. And as you learned, I was from Louisville, so I'm going to give you my Kentucky Derby prediction. I like a horse named Dunkirk. He has late closing speed. He only finished second in the Florida Derby, but that was on a track that had favored the speed all day long. I see Dunkirk coming back strong in the Derby and winning for Todd Pletcher. And one more thing I want to say about racing. I want to talk to the industry owners in horse racing and say, please be like Jess Jackson, Curlin's owner, last year. One thing you need to understand is for a sport to be viable, it needs fans, and fans need something to cheer for. Too many of our horses don't run past the Belmont and definitely don't run into their four-year-old year. When you take away the stars, as soon as people get to know them, you can't grow a sport. I'm going to use the last part of mine to do an editorial comment. I figured I could talk about the Orioles, Ravens, everybody's doing that. I'm going to do an editorial comment for some guys that do not normally get positive <laughs> comments. Article 1 of the U.S. Constitution has something called a Bill of Attainder that our founding fathers banned. A Bill of Attainder is a governmental action where it convicts a specific individual or group of a crime without trial for something they did in the past before it was a crime and it usually leaves out others that have committed the same crime. I think modern baseball players have been served with the steroids bill of attainder. They are singled out for punishment in ways that go far beyond what happens to their sports brothers. In the NFL, many star players have tested positive or admitted to use of illegal substances. Guys like Merriman, Peppers, etc. They get rewarded with big contracts and NFL recognition even in the years when they were suspended. No one asked Rodney Harrison to give back his Super Bowl ring. Even in baseball, no one really cares about the suspensions of guys like Rafael Betancourt, Guillermo Moda, Jose Guillen. They don't care because they're not worth it. It's only fun to tear down the greats. The mass of do-gooders only enjoys blackballing Barry Bonds or keeping Mark McGuire out of the hall. I mean, look, in 2003 when A-Rod anonymously tested positive, there were 103 others. I mean, just do the math. That's at least three or four per team, and I think the true number is much higher. Because on the one hand, just the threat of testing, anonymous or otherwise, probably convinced a few to quit that year. And I'm sure many were using HGH and other substances that weren't appropriate tests for. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm all for testing now, and those that get caught should be punished. But that era was what it was. Just don't judge these other men separately, and don't tell me after seeing the lists of who has tested positive that you can tell me that Player X is clean for sure. One argument against the inclusion of these guys in the hall and the recognition of the records is that it's unfair to the older generation. Hey, man, I say bull. If you read Ball 4 and other accounts of that era, illegal amphetamines were extremely prevalent, with estimates of as high as three-quarters of players using. Either through their own admission or court records, Pete Rose, Willie Mays, Willie Stargell, among others, have been named as major users of illegal amphetamines. I'll admit they are not as performance-enhancing as steroids, but, one, any substance that gets you on the field when otherwise you might be in the dugout, to me, that's the definition of performance-enhancing. And if you look at recent home run totals, in 2005 and 6, after the steroid testing began, they didn't decline that much. It wasn't until 07 when amphetamines were included that there was a marked decline. As I said, I'm not saying they're worse than steroids, but I am saying they help the older crowd amass their stats and records too. So why aren't those records tainted? And as for the holier than thou attitude of many older ball players, I ask if you were willing to illegally take amphetamines, why wouldn't you have done steroids if they'd been more readily available? I want all the steroid era players to get a fair shake from the hall. Bonds and Clemens should be first ballot shoe ins. But since McGuire got to be the first one on the ballot, I will address the disgrace that has been done to his candidacy. This year he received a vote total that put him in the same vicinity as Dave Parker. I mean, come on. McGuire is way better than Dave Parker. He was a dominant power hitter even before what would be considered his steroid era. His first four years, he averaged 40 homers. He was Rookie of the Year. He was a top MVP candidate four times before 1996. He won a gold glove and went to 12 All-Star games. His at-bat to home run ratio in the years before his move to St. Louis was 12 to 1. All of those things compare favorably to Willie McCovey, who is a first ballot Hall of Famer. So what I ask is to stop punishing these ballplayers in a way that seems limited just to them. Remove their bill of attainder and judge Clemens, Bonds, and McGuire, etc. on how they played on the field against the players of their era. If you want to say to players of that era, 
500 home runs doesn't mean the same as what it did to others, that's fine and accurate. But it's not fine to not acknowledge the greatness of these players, the greatness that was shown in any era. So get off their backs and riders, put guys like them in the Hall of Fame. Thanks a lot. That's my editorial comment. If you love Baltimore sports, you'll love WNST.net. 